everybody, my name is Markiplier and welcome to Polybridge, an often suggested game that I am totally on board with playing. I actually played a game like this on my phone way back when because I was an engineering nerd and I love this sort of stuff. So you do this by do that, and then you do that, and then you do that, and then you start the simulation, and then it goes to an isometric view. Like how cool is that? It, it's, a, it's a bridge building game which not is not a, like an uncommon theme in terms of game, but this hopefully is gonna do it in a unique way that's gonna make it really interesting to play. So, with that being said, I don't think it's gonna support the weight of that car. I think it's gonna need to be- have extra support right there. Oh no! It broke! They're all dead! Instantly! Everybody in their family has gone to hell! Straight dive bomb straight into hell. So, obviously, we need a tool wheel. So we need wood. I've actually never played this before, so I'm just kind of winging it as I go. Oh look! Bridges need support. So as an engineering nerd, like, I, I love this sort of stuff. Like, I love, I used to be a civil engineer before I was gonna be a uh, biomedical engineer. So we need to build a road. Yes, we do. Absolutely, we do. I completely agree. Then we need to get the wood, which tool, get the wood. Oh, we're gonna build a truss bridge. Let's see how we're gonna do this. Hang on. Okay, I don't, I don't need to constantly click. I, I just need to click once and I'm good. Go, go, baby, go. See, it's, it's providing support by being on- Okay, the triangles are very good structurally stable thing. The arch is the most structurally stable thing, but I don't know if this is gonna have arches in it. It's probably just gonna, all gonna be point and point click. So, with that being said, you need to- Oh, or we need a suspension. We need to terrain joints. So with terrain joints, we're gonna have a cable here. Or no, we're gonna have- Wait. Start building a road across with the terrain joints. Hang on. Wait, what? Oh, okay, I, I see what you mean. Oh, okay, I thought you were gonna have something else. So, with a suspension bridge, you need to... Okay, hang on. Come on. Dude, do something here. Do something here. Oh, boy. Okay, it was the wrong thing. I was selecting the wrong thing. I was so confused there. I was like, what in the world is even happening? Okay, I got it then. Yeah, so with the suspension bridge, you anchor it to two points, natural landmarks that are higher up, so it's hanging instead of lifting. There's different types of structural for a bridge. You can either prop it up from the bottom or prop it up from the top to give it a simple explanation. And you do that through various methods. There's a lot of different methods by which you can build a bridge. Like, there's no one way to do about it. That's because there's a lot of bridges that look different from each other. But this one it uses a stabilizing point of those totally not gonna fall over rocks. Very sturdy. Very sturdy rocks. And then it supports the weight of the bridge and distributes it along the entire cable length. Which is really cool, because, you know, it's okay. Time to a draw bridge. The rectangle in the middle shows where a swift will be going through. Now this is another challenge in terms of bridge building, because normally bridges are built on rivers. They can be built over ravines, of course, but they're normally built over rivers so that you can cross between two bodies of land. So, with the river, you have a lot of ships going through. So how do you keep something structurally stable and have a moving se section that can go up or down or move around and still retain the structural integrity of the entire bridge? That's an interesting, totally interesting thing. So, with that being said, you build a road first, I guess. But I don't think a road's gonna cut it. You need to actually have a different section that's going to allow it to go up and down where it's needed. So, if you could thank you. So, we're gonna build the bridge as per normal. Like what it would normally be if we were just building a bridge. Which is, like, it's got both support and truss. So with the hydraulics, we're gonna make that middle part lift up to clear the red area. Again, I've never played this game, but I, I love these types of games just because it's fun for a nerd like me. I don't know how it works in this one, but it looks like it's gonna work like that. So the double joint bridge, create a split joint needed to open the drawbridge. I agree. So we need a bridge joint. Actually, so... Ah, double click. Oh, never mind. Double click. There we go. Done. Easy as that. So now that's there. The hydraulics can move. The bridge is very stable because it's supported from the bottom. And it's also got supports on the natural landmark on the side. So the way the trusses work on a triangle formation is that it, it's trying to spread the weight outwards. So when the car is in the middle and it's pressing down in the middle, it gets both support from 
the structures on the bottom and also because the weight is pseudo lifted from the trusses that are pushing down on the sides it distributes the weight very evenly makes a very stable thing it's a pretty typical bridge formation anyway i'm nerding out again sorry sorry everybody sorry okay visualize load bearing stress on joints this is where computer situation simulations come in handy for bridges this is because you have to get this here and now i'm totally on my own so i probably have to just build it as i build it so as with most typical bridges you're gonna build it as most typical bridges would oh come on i'm i thought i would be on my own by now okay now it's oh it is my turn to support this bridge so obviously we have a problem oh it's not gonna reach what am i gonna do how am i gonna make this supporting this give me a second i'll think about that Okay, so obviously we learned about, you know, standard trusses, which are built as such. And you need to make sure you keep it at 45 degree angles, because 45 degree, ang degree angles, triangles, or what are they called in geometry? No, really, what are they called in geometry, because I can't remember. Oops, that's not what I wanted. How do I get there that? Okay, so the other problem here is that, oh, it doesn't quite reach that, so how are we going to get that? So what we need to do is we need to build an intermediary step, and this is where we use the grid to judge. So you need 4x4 four four understanding of what the bridge is going to be, and then you build from there. That way, you have support of the bridge from the bottom in a semi-sturdy way, but you also have support from the bridge from the top. Now, you could also build something, but you don't want to add too much that it causes weight. And I'm pretty close to my maximum budget here. Technically, I'm under budget, but this is like the best I could do for what it is. And see, no shift, no shimmy, very sturdy. But I used a lot of budget, so in a lot of things with bridges, you can overbuild, but you really want to build exactly to what you need, plus a lot to account for wind and weather and stuff like that. Oh, you need to do a lot of these things. So to do that, we need to try to understand. So let me show you something else that we could do, which is common in bridges, as many of you have seen. Shit, didn't mean to do that. Come on. Uh. So what I'm doing here is I'm branching out to two parts of the road from a single point. That puts a lot of stress on the middle, so we want to kind of alleviate that stress away from the center point. But we don't have enough budget, or we probably don't have enough budget to go the entire way across the bridge. So I'm fairly sure that we can actually go just halfway and build this in the middle of it. And that distributes the weight to the outside, but I don't- actually that may not work. Now let's see if this works. It might work. It worked! Typically bridges are- bridge roads are sturdier but sturdier than that with concrete and rebar in that and there wouldn't be all that flex going. But we saved money! We didn't use all of it. We didn't need to use all of it. So, it kind of- what, what I did- that middle structure in the middle, it created a distribution because the middle had the support, but you needed support for the other ones too, but you don't need to go all the way across the bridge to be able to support it. You can do it just in the middle where it is, and then you can move forward from there as much as is needed. Does that make any sense? You still following me? Science with Markiplier! Well, it's not even science, it's just physics. Whoops! No! No! Oh god, no! I didn't mean to press that button! <laughs> oh no! Those poor families, they were just going to Disney World! Oh boy! Okay, so anyway. So now, from here, you really have fun with the game because then you get to do whatever you want. I mean, it's not giving me the suspension stuff yet, and obviously there's a lot of solutions to complex problems that you don't need. But, with this, it's relatively simple. See, that doesn't reach all the way. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna build actually an intermediary step in between the two of these, and use it as a joint stress. Stress. See what I mean? Cool, huh? And that reaches perfectly there. That reaches there. This reaches. This reaches there. And that supports the middle of it. And that will support the middle of it very strongly. But we still have the problem of the other parts of the bridge. So the opposite of what I showed you before is is uh, is able to be shown in a different structure. Like it's pretty simple what it's going to be because it actually is literally the opposite of it. So instead of looking in the middle, you look at the ends, and you want the ends to be able to support uh, what you got in the middle instead of the other way around. Because we don't need to support the middle, the other one was a shorter bridge, so it could be supported from the middle instead of doing on both the ends. But this way, we support everything that we need and nothing that we don't. 
See what I mean? You will now. Go, go, go! Don't die, don't die, don't die! Yay, yay, yay! You died, okay, well that didn't work at all. <clears throat> Ignore everything that I said. I'm a liar, and I should be ashamed of myself. Okay, so for this one, like I said before, and I totally didn't fail, and nothing bad happened at all, because engineering is a guessing game, we're gonna see if this works again. Because it's the same idea that I had before, but I'm willing to bet that the heavier car is gonna cause- No! Yeah! Okay, so obviously the same thing that I said before worked, but I'm pretty close to my maximum tolerance on that joint stress, so you don't want to overseed that, and uh, I actually- I actually texted before in terms of failure that maybe or maybe not you guys saw that the opposite ends of it would never mind never mind at all never mind at all okay so now we're climbing an incline and with this we have nothing else supporting we're still just doing with road and wood but the con the concept is still the same oh no it's not never mind Okay, alright, wait, I had to test that worked. I didn't want to, like, talk out of my ass here, so... Uh, with an incline, you have to worry about a couple things. You have to worry about the vehicle being able to go up and over where you want to go, being able to go up a hill. So you want to make the hill as gentle as possible, start, start steep, and even out as it goes up. Because if you're going slow and then you ramp up at the end, it's going to be much harder for it to overcome the last bit there. So you want to, like, start more and then gently curve into there and the structure it's it's still the same so you don't need to worry about it but what you do need to worry about is the way that stress is being pulled if if i like the it works out differently if i'm or at least i think it works out differently if i'm having all of these pull from the left as opposed to crap hang on one second it probably it probably going to still work anyway like i'm not i'm not terribly worried about it but like, oops, nope, get out of there. So if it's all pulling from the left... Eh, it still works. It's still fine. Yeah. Alright, so yeah, either way, like, it, it doesn't matter, but when you're accounting for a bridge, this is a heavy vehicle, so you always need to be mindful of how the bridge is built in accordance with where the vehicle is going to be at all points across the bridge, because the weight of the vehicle will move entirely across the bridge, fairly evenly, but the points at which the stress affects, like, how the- how the thing is built. So you could, like, double reinforce these if it would reach all the way, or have, like, a middle truss here where you have all these, like, go in between, or something like that, but the basics of bridge building are all the same, you try to support the weight as best you can on your two anchor points. That's all there is to it. I'm gonna do one more after this. Don't die, kids! I would love to have an analysis to see what the stress is and being able to see, like, the stress as a colored version of it, but we'll see. Scooter. Ah, uh, scooter. Oh, we're gonna jump, are we? Well, I had no idea. Alright then, fine. This seems like a weird application, but... Okay, so with a jump, we're trying to curve up. Right, we're trying to curve up. Can't create any more road? Okay, got it. So. So, as with most physics lessons, the question is, what's the best angle for the most distance? And that's just a question of gravity. How far can it go before it's gonna come back down to the Earth? So when you're launching, you want a, la you want a very specific launch angle, and the launch angle is pretty much the same in most applications. Like, th people would think it would be 45 degrees, and they, they might be right, I'm not exactly sure, so we're gonna find out. <laughs> Again, I don't wanna talk out of my ass! For some reason, I wanna say that it's 30, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Alright, I'm wondering, I'm wondering if this is gonna be enough that he could get across just from a really good go. I don't know how fast he's gonna go, so we'll see. Go, man, go! Go, I believe in you! Go! He made it! Okay, so I'm gonna try this again at a 45 degree angle because I want to say 30. I wanted to say 30 was gonna be better, but we'll try it again at a 45 degree angle. That's 45, right? Yeah, that's 45. Because, yeah, I, I don't, I don't believe, I don't believe it's gonna be better, but we'll see. Let's see what happens. Hooray! 
Wee! Oh, he still made it. He popped a wheelie too. He looked way cooler going 45 than 30. <laughs> it all depends on like the speed, the angle, whatever. There's a bunch of other physics behind it, but there's generally, typically, we, we studied it in discus too, like what was the optimal angle for throwing a discus as far because you're at a stationary point, 45 degree angle is probably always going to be the best. Probably definitely. Probably definitely. I say probably definitely because I can't say for certain because I don't remember it was too long ago. I could have been an engineer. Ah! Probably a lot of what I'm saying is wrong too. Oh boy, another jump. This is practical everyday applications here. So. Oddly enough, what I want is, I want this guy to still be building up speed before he goes into his jump. So, I, want him to, I don't just want him to jump from the beginning, I want him to actually continue on and then launch himself. Which actually might be interesting, hang on, let me, let me get that at a deeper angle. That might actually give him more speed. Not sure though. That's a lot of that's a lot of stress. That's a lot of stress. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Okay, it didn't work. <laughs> they're dead. They're very dead. They're very dead. Oh, they're very dead. All right, hang on. Yeah, I didn't think so. Just the way they careen into the ocean is really funny to me. No! So this is actually probably gonna work out a lot better, but we'll see about that. Who knows? Who knows? Nope, buckled like a bitch. Ah! <laughs> this screen off, it's so funny. All right, so it's, it's too heavy on this end, but it still needs some support. So. Okay, so the reason the last one failed is because it buckled, and buckling is generally bad. The other option that we could do is obviously, it doesn't have to all be the weight over here. I just noticed that there are actually anchor points over here, because my camera was over here. I didn't notice that. So, when this fails, and it's going to, it's gonna fail. Oh shit, it did not! Yeah, it didn't fail! Okay, the reason why this succeeded uh, is because when you're when you're doing this, uh, when, you, when you have two stacked on each other, you, you have a lot of structural support straight up and down, but you don't have a lot of, uh, uh, horizontal strength. Like, it's with concrete. Concrete has a lot of compression force, but, uh, what is it? Rending forces? I forget what it's called. I forget all the names. I've forgotten everything, but horizontal forces, it's not very strong on, especially when it's bearing a lot of load, so that's why it can be knocked out easily. Uh, so with this, and with wood, instead of when you have a middle joint, you, you need a triangle base to focus the weight in, which acts as stabilizing for the force, because the force, when the weight is applied downwards, hopefully equals out so that it doesn't buckle the joint one way or another. So I was able to launch them from one to the other without actually building a ramp on the other side, because one, I had them continue to accelerate going downwards, and then they launched off at a good angle going upwards, and they were able to get enough distance, and somehow they landed on each top of each other, the scooter man died probably, and then everything went to hell. So that was how that happened. Well, let's watch that again. Whee! Hoo -hoo! And dead. <laughs> Immediately dead. So yeah. That is, uh, Polybridge. I... I have a love for these types of games just because I love this sort of type of stuff. I love puzzle games and I like the idea of what this means. And it's a really cool game. Calming music, really good styling. I think it's cool. So, thank you everybody so much for watching. Let me know how wrong I was about everything that I said in the comments down below. Let me know all the terminology that I've forgotten since school. Let me know just how big of an idiot I seemed. And let me know what you think of the game at the same time. Thank you everybody so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye! Coming in your face! What happened? Oh man! I really want to like this game!